with this little bee sleeping. <laughs> this one's sleeping too. <laughs> I, was, I was just trying to say good morning. And he played and possum on you. <laughs> that made my Did heart. Did you need coffee? I know. I'm good. <laughs> All right, let's get our suit on. We got, we got a busy day ahead of us. some honey from this one. I'm gonna just plop it right here because I want to look. I think this whole thing is full and capped. Right. So we put the fuming board on and waited a few minutes for the bees to completely go down to the bottom and that's what we're kind of working with. I don't want to have to be fighting the bees uh, when it comes time to harvesting. So I'm gonna go through but it looks like all of this, this whole super is capped and ready to uh, ready to be pulled. Wow. I need to wipe that off. That is very, very pretty. Um, you wanna grab this? I'll yep. hand this Coming off. right now. This one's really nice. Oh, beautiful. Okay, that. So that whole honey super was completely full, so I just picked the entire box up and I'm using the greenhouse right now as a temporary storage. Um, we're gonna actually spin the honey over in the apothecary because, well, we have AC <laughs> and it's gonna be a lot more comfortable spinning the honey versus uh, doing it out here, uh, obviously fighting the bees. That's the one thing I would recommend is when you're going to harvest your honey, make sure that you have a space set up, whether it's in your house, your basement, your garage, the biggest thing is, is you want to be able to not be open uh, to where the bees could actually find that honey and then have a whole robbing situation. And believe me, it's chaotic. So make sure you have your space set up. Oh, that's so pretty it is. Let me see, hold it up to the light. Oh, look at that color. Yeah, can you see through it? Yeah, that's gorgeous. Wow. All capped. You want a morning sun? Yeah. Very pretty. Oh, wow. Look at all that honey. So this is, this one's, they propolized it too. <laughs> They're like, new. No! That whole thing, honey? Huh? That whole box? That whole. Yeah. Wow. This one is, is, they're working on they're it. They're working on it? We'll let them yeah, have so it. so I'm just going to put it back, but I'm going to clean these out. Yep, that's a good idea. we got to cut the grass. I'm going to as soon as we're done. <laughs> yep. That's honey. ahead and pulled some of the honey frames that were fully capped. We don't like to pull honey frames that have any open brood or uncapped honey. That's just one thing that we try to to stick with and mainly because of that moisture content. Plus if we have any frames that have any brood in it whether it's day old egg or capped brood and it has honey on it we like to actually leave that for the bees because that's their resource. And that does help make sure that we are leaving a good bit of honey for for them. 
Now when it comes to our style of beekeeping, you guys may or may not have seen that we actually don't use queen excluders with our colonies. A queen excluder just basically keeps the queen from moving up into the honey super area. This is our style of beekeeping. This is what we prefer. We are actually not beekeepers for honey. We're more into this for rescuing bees as well as building up colonies and helping supply a lot of people in our area with good healthy bees. For us, we go through each colony and if there are frames that they could let go of, we will pull. But ultimately the bee survival and their resources mean so much more to us for them to have versus us pulling the honey and, and taking everything that they have created. Here in Virginia, we actually have two nectar flows. The fall nectar flow is really, really good. And that is what they're gonna be foraging for to be able to prepare for winter. So my dad is using the Hive Butler uncapping station. I've done a few videos on, on Hive Butler totes, but when it comes to the uncapping station, it has been very, very helpful. The bottom tote has a valve that when this is actually full of honey, we'll be able to easily pour this off. Now, some of the things that we have found that has been extremely helpful when it comes to honey harvesting, obviously doing it in an area where you're, you're away from the bees because they're going to be gang bust and try to eat everything that we have just pulled. The other thing is to get everything set up the night before. Kind of do a dry run so that you know the flow of how you want things to, to go. But I think one of the biggest lessons that we have learned is to always double check and make sure if you're using honey buckets to be able to store your honey, make sure that they're food grade and always double check your valves. Always make sure that they are sealed. There is a gasket that is inside this and sometimes that gasket might have a crack in it and I've seen people actually lose their, their honey harvest. Do a dry run, fill it up with water. If you know that it's holding water, I think you're gonna be okay. Obviously, before you put honey in it though, you make sure that that bucket is completely dry because you don't wanna actually add moisture into your honey because that could actually ferment your honey. Here's our propolis jar. All right, get it here. Cause... Let's go ahead and harvest a nice big old chunk. Right. So satisfying.
So the honey frames that we pulled were all capped, but this is our refractometer and I figured I've done a few videos in the past uh, when it comes to testing honey and moisture content, but we're here. So let's go ahead and uh, sample a little bit so we can look and see what the moisture content actually is in our honey. I'm gonna go ahead and take it outside and look at it in the sunlight. Ooh, it's very bright. So our goal is to be around 18, 18%. So let's look. Oh, I know, <laughs> really? Yeah, that's, see? She's like, um, that was mine. I know, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll let you have a little treat. Maybe going outside with honey is not the smartest right now. So let's try this inside. It is kind of measuring around the 16% mark. It's kind of hard for you guys to see. I know I understand. Is a good amount we were like i said we were extremely conservative with our honey harvest i think if we were to have pulled all of it we probably would have at least probably we'd be buying more buckets we're, yeah definitely we'd have probably been at eight i think eight or ten yeah because we we definitely left a lot and out of all of the honey out of the supers what did we do 10 20 30 40 50, 60, about 90. Yeah. No, um, 60, 64. 80, 84. So 84 frames of honey to about five to five five gallon buckets, possibly more, because our uncapping station that we have here from Hive Butler, all of this is dripping down, and you can see that's all honey. So we've, we probably we've, got six. Yeah, we might we, we might have about six, and then we're doing the last. Yeah, that's another full bucket. Yep, five and a half going on six so far. I'm tired. Dad left us. Yep, he left. He was like, "My job is done. Yeah. I'm out. I'm gonna go take a shower. I'm sticky. I'm done." I'm very sticky. It was a long day, but it was a good day. I smell really good. My skin feels very nice, but Fantine I have honey on me everywhere. Uh, I was the only one that got stung. Well, no, no, take that back. My husband and I did get stung. I got stung three times today. He only got stung once on accident, only because he was coming up here to help. And long story short, he got stung in his hand, but we use some of our plantain stuff, which I've got right here, which is amazing. I yes. told you guys about the plantain and how awesome it is on bee stings. Uh, as soon as I got stung, I actually put some on and it was pretty much immediate that the pain actually went away. and. I'm really not reacting at all, which is really awesome. That's, yeah. It's definitely yeah. awesome. And want to say a special thanks to the Hive Butler. Um, yes. Your oh guys' my gosh. I know. 
the totes, the travel totes. I know I've shared in the past about the hive butler, but I'm telling you what, for us to be able to pull honey frames and put them right in the tote, have it completely sealed. In the apiary. Yes, exactly. It was great. And then not only that, which I moved the uncapping station out there, having the uncapping station has been a huge benefit for us and uh, doing what we're doing. Yes. So with that, how much honey did we end up with? I'm going to guess around 360 pounds of honey. That's awesome. Which and that good. was a very conservative uh, removal of, yeah. of honey. Yeah. I mean, we left each hive had at least and one, one honey super. full honey super. And, you know, yeah. at least. Yeah. So Some we didn't take any off of. And that's okay, too. You know, that was one of our things. Our biggest thing is I don't want to have to feed. That's not my goal. I will if I have to, but that's not my goal. That's not what I want to do. And you know what? I feel like our honey is delicious. We will be putting some up on the Etsy shop. I'll also be bringing some with me uh, to the Homesteaders of America conference. So if you guys are going to that conference and you're going to maybe possibly, which I did announce in a live and I did not actually do this in a video, uh, but I will be speaking this year at the HOA at the conference um, and trying to help teach people about how to catch, how to catch bees. Yes. So with that, we're done. Yeah. I'm I'm hungry. I'm yep. sticky. I need a shower. Thank you guys for yep. watching. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs>